I started my gardening life as a florist and so for me tulips have got to be really wonderful for picking and the epitome of that is this one which is called ballerina and I just love it it's scented it's architectural it's pointy it's elegant it's got a great vase life so you know you can't beat it in the same family, which is the lily flowered family, which is the same pointy shape, is this one called Sarah Raven. And I love this because it's got a really good vase life and it's sort of deep, dark, sealing wax red or even darker. It's so, it's beautiful and classy, very perennial and lasts for ages in a vase. So that's, that's another real winner. This one is called La Belle Epoque and this is unbelievably fashionable at the moment it's just everyone loves it they love the sort of mix and so do i of the kind of lilac with the sort of taupey mushroomy um cafe au lait color and so that's a beauty and that's lovely in a vase and so unusual and then these two final ones i really love increasingly actually because they look so like peonies they are actually called the peony flowered group and they're double lates uh, this one is a new one called pink star and this one is a really traditional one called angelique which people have loved for ages and they just are kind of romantically lovely and beautiful almost like a rose in a bowl so those are the best for picking and then if you love containers as we do, we have loads and loads of tulips and pots all around Perch Hill. These are my three front runners currently. Um, and you can see they're all quite they're all quite petite, they're all quite short, which is good in a window box. You don't want them too tall because it sort of tips the whole thing both aesthetically and physically, it gets the balance wrong. Um, and I've got one parrot in here, which is called Rococo, and it flowers really long and um, it starts sort of mid-April and goes right the way through into May. And um, it's, it looks good at all stages. It looks good in bud and it looks good even as it's dropping its petals. All these, again, are the doubles. Now, the thing about doubles is that they are actually sterile. And so their nectaries have been bred to be secondary petaloids. Now, what that means, sorry, my dogs are barking. What that means is that they can't get pollinated and they've got nothing for the pollinators. So you need to grow them with things like Cerinthi honeywort, which is fantastic for pollinators. But what's great as a gardener is that they flower for almost twice as long and they last for almost twice as long in a vase. So in a container, that's obviously really fantastic. Oh, I didn't give you their names. This one is called Palmyra, which is quite new. This is Antracet, which won our dark tulip trial about 15 years ago now. And then this is another new one called Brownie. So they're all wonderful. Now, if you don't want to do picking or pots, but you just want them in your borders, tulips, then you want to go for perennializing varieties. And what I've got here, <clears throat> these have all been in the garden for about 10 years. The Viridiflora group, the green flowered group, which has the green flash down the petal. This one's called Spring Green. This one's called Chinatown. Now those are both incredibly perennial. They've been coming up in the same place for at least 10 years. Chinatown's rather nice because it's got this variegated foliage, which is, makes it quite unusual. And then another pairing that I think of sort of together are these because they flower in March. They flower really early. It's now late April, so you can see how long they've flowered. This is Purissima. This is Exotic Emperor. They've been in the same spot for 15 years in the garden here, so they're really good for perennializing. And then this crazy, lovely flamboyant one is called Green Wave. Again, it's got a green flash. And if you actually look at the green flash on any of these varieties, you can see it's much um, a sort of thicker texture petal. And that, I think, is what makes them, well, anyway, those seem to be more perennial, but also they last well in bad weather. But this is a new discovery for me, which is called Mistress Mystic. Um, and there's a very similar one called Mistress Grey. And I hadn't realized this was perennial at all, planted it under our apple tree. And what's happened over the years, I think I put it in about five years ago, is you've got a mother bulb, but then around it, you've got lots of little sisters. And that is a sure sign that something's perennializing because the main bulb has formed bulbils, which have then got to flowering size. So they're really settling in. 
and becoming just completely perennial plants. So those are all those. Oh, and I forgot this one, which is an absolute classic for perennialising called Negrita. Some would say it's on the boring side, but it's been in the garden here for 20 years. And then similarly for perennialising in grass and naturalising, the best of all, without doubt, in our trials here is Purple Dream. That's just been incredible. But if you like more delicate things to go with your Narcissus, there's one that's already gone over here, which is called Turkestanica. But this one I love that follows on called Honky Tonk. And we've got it in the grass here with great parsons and it looks so nice and so sort of delicate. Final group are the new and interesting ones that are just uh, emerging from breeding programs at the moment. And the first that I want to show you is a variety called Ridgedale. And I've picked it with two well-known tulips. So this is the one I'm talking about called Ridgedale. And this is a classic sort of port wine red called Jan Roos, J-A-N Roos. And then this is Queen of Night, which I'm sure lots of you know. But can you see what a, a sophisticated and unusual colour that Ridgedale is? So again, it's a semi-double or double, and it's quite short, it's quite late, but it's got this beautiful, unusual colouring. And that's an absolute new favourite of mine. I completely love it. And then, sort of, with a hint of similarity to that, I think, is this one, which is called Slower. And when I first saw this in a trial field, I wasn't absolutely convinced, but I've totally come round to it because you can put it either with paler apricotty colours or you can put it with the dark rich colours because it's got both in its flower. So that's flower. And then finally, this one <clears throat> is called Copper Touch. Really lovely scent. And I didn't know that until this year. Picked a bunch of it, put it by my bed. Whole place full of delicious fragrance. So for me, those have been my favourites of this year.